my name is Jenny, and I'm here f subbing for Eve, and um, we'll be doing, I, I hope you know, a Feeding Your Demons guided process tonight. So, um, and that's, um, how many of us here have done that, have done the process before? Uh, okay, yeah, it's good. So for some, it's a first time. Yeah, okay, great. I'll say, um, so we have 90 minutes together. Um, the first 30 minutes or so, we'll do a little practice. We'll sit and I'll explain um, the process. And then we'll dive in and do it. And the process itself, the five steps takes about 30 minutes. And then we'll have some time at the end to share and to connect about our process around this. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a student and lineage holder of um, under my teacher, whose name is Lama Sultram Alione. Yes. Oh, OK. So yeah. Intimacy with the microphone. Yes. <laughs> like this? Well, OK. I'll speak more loudly. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, what I was saying is that um, I'm a, a student and teacher under my teacher, who is a woman named Lama Sultramalione. And she's a Western woman that has studied Tibetan Buddhism since the 60s. Um, I've been a student of hers for 15 years, and um, the Feeding Your Demons is one of the methods that she's uh, created, you know, developed in this lifetime. So, I mean, I'm... So let's, uh, let, let's begin first by sitting a little bit. And well, this is much better, by the way. I can feel it. I can hear you. Let's let's begin by sitting and um, coming into our bodies, and we'll raise our um, bodhicitta. Yeah. Good. So you know, for some of us, we like to practice with our eyes closed, and for some of us. Um, having the eyes slightly opened or gazing down, uh, you know, the angle of uh, our nose is helpful. So we've all you know, transitioned from our day into this space, into the Sangha of practice. So allowing uh, the body to land and allowing the mind to land inside the body. And we do this in the Buddhist tradition with the three doors, the three gates, the body, speech and mind. And we'll begin with the body. And whatever way feels natural to you, feeling the quiet presence of your body. You know, not only here in space, but also with you. And sometimes when we bring our attention into our body, we can begin to feel a kind of stability or a kind of presence. And then knowing that this process of coming into our body takes time and you know, we'll see how we feel at the end of our time together. And then the second gate, the second door is speech, but the speech rides on the breath. So we'll bring our awareness to our breath. 
and allowing the breath to be easy and natural in the sense that we are allowing our awareness to be with our breath as it is arising in our body in this moment. And of course, the mind will wander, so we can gently bring it back to the feeling of the breath. Or to the way the breath moves the body, lightly swaying. And then the third uh, door, the mind. And here we can practice the shamatha just lightly, which is following the out breath. And at the end of the out breath, noticing a kind of gap or opening that's there that appears, letting the mind rest there even as you inhale. So as your body empties the air, right before the body will turn to inhale again, there's a gap or a space opening. And allowing the mind to rest as the body takes its next inhale. And we'll practice this together for just a couple minutes. And then we'll do three more breaths together, inhaling, exhaling, touching that spaciousness that's all around us, inside of us. And on your last exhale, we can bring our hands to our heart center and raising our bodhicitta. Bodhi, awake, chitta, mind, or awakened mind, heart, mind. So connecting to that spaciousness at our heart center, the, uh, what Sogni Rinpoche calls essence love. And we make the intention that our time together, that it be of benefit for our own awakening, our own unfolding, and also for the benefit of all beings everywhere. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. So um, before, before we um, begin, or I get into sharing a little bit about the practice itself, I'd love to have us turn into groups of maybe either two or three and um, share, if, if you're comfortable, share a little bit about what's been weighing on you, um, what's been, uh, what's, what's been uh, kind of a, a weight, you know, a burden, uh, a demon that you've been carrying, um, that you've been feeling, you know, in your body or in your mind, um, and then we'll come back together. So yeah, just turn to, groups of two or three are good. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one more minute. Thank you. 
Okay, let's <clears throat> let's come back together. So let's come back together. Can I? Can we hear from maybe just a couple of us what's been what's been on our on our minds or what's been weighing on our hearts? I always love the moment when when we do this together and we break into groups and we're talking basically about our demons, but the energy goes real up, like <laughs> real happy. It's nice. Does anybody want to share? Yeah, Cage has the mic. Okay, well, um, I've had this demon or um, kind of a, I consider a shadow figure because I do realize it's part of myself from dreams when she visited me in the early 1980s. And then I feel like just knowing about her made some kind of slight difference, but I've basically not dealt with her um, until maybe a recent dream. And also now with my therapist, it feels like, well, at some point in my life, <laughs> I should try and incorporate this other side that I am really have this visceral dislike of. I see. So it's, but it's good. What's the, what's the feeling? It's like a dislike oh, or hatred, oh, annoyance? Oh, physical dis, it's like almost ill. Yeah, uh, uh, sick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a powerful, powerful figure. Okay. And, um, but which I do quite well ignoring and living my life because <laughs> I, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but so I'm, I, I felt this was just a perfect thing because in, I want to start to, look at this figure, the shadow, and and for the feeding it, which is a little scary, feels like it would make it more powerful, but in another way, yes. that idea of starting to accept yes. part of myself. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, in the, at, at, at the root, um, my teacher talks about this five-step process as being a compassion practice. So part of the skillful means branch of the Dharma in the, in the sense that in this um, container of the steps or turning towards and actually dialoguing with offering not only our attention, our seeing of this part of ourself that's usually in our shadow, but also this kind of tender feeding of it, you know, giving of it. Um, yes. So, okay. Let, you know, let's see, just a few things of what we can work. The practice itself is genius, very elegant, done in 30 minutes, you know, five steps. Uh, I will hold us through the process. The process itself is tight. It'll hold you. Uh, and um, well, you know, we kind of learn by doing and we see what's going to what comes up for us in this moment. Um, so what's usually recommended and I know you all know who've done this before is that you're what's best if you can is to use the to work with the demon, the thing, the energy is blocking your energy kind of right now or lately. Uh, if uh, and sometimes it's said that if we're doing this new or beginning, it's best not to do the demon that's like 10, you know, like the first attachment wound, you know, maybe best to, um, you know, put do a three on the scale. But the truth is, you know, um, you know, last night I couldn't sleep. So I was up in the middle of the night, you know, do you ha I had that moment where I was like, I should practice, you know, but uh, so I made my, I got up and I did the feeding your demons process, you know, and I was feeling, uh, I just, I didn't know what it was, but anxious in my body, you know. So I did, I, I felt the, I, I guided myself, and this I'll be guiding you, but, you know, I allowed myself to really feel, uh, you know, the unnameable thing. I didn't even need to name it anxiety, but I could let myself really feel it at two in the morning, you know. 
in the dark and then did the process where I'll guide you, you feel it and then you out picture, you imagine the demon, what that, if it took form, what it would look like in front of you, you know, and then you die, and then we will dialogue with it. And at a certain point you change positions and you take the seat of the demon as the demon in that energy body and experience, you know, what that piece of you, what that part of you is, what it feels like. And then as we go through the process, eventually what ends up happening is that the, um, the demon, after we, we feed it, we, we nurture it, we give it what it will ask questions, what do you want and what do you need? So the want and the needs are different, you know? You may want, the demon may say, well, I just, I just want you to pay attention to me, you know, or something. And what it really needs may be a hug. You know, I'm not, I don't know, I'm, I'm, and then this process of, you know, nurturing yourself, feeding the, this, this demon, this part of you that we turn away from transforms it because as we know in the essence of the Vajrayana is that the obstacle or the so-called obstruction encumbered emotion is the same energy that's the awakened emotion. So the same energy that's been in the demon, once I looked at it and I gave it her, it, it was uh, an old woman in the middle of the night. You know, I, once I gave her what uh, she said she needed and how she would feel, she, she changed, you know. And then the ally, it took time for the ally to appear for me, in, in I'm saying, and I've done this thousands of times. So you'll see how it is for you. Sometimes it'll come quick, the visualizations, and sometimes you'll need a little bit more time. And for me, the ally was appearing very slowly, you know, but then finally I could see her feet and they were really standing on the ground. And then that was important for my psyche to, to get that from her, you know, and then the rest of her came into being. So um, what we want to work with now, you know, for you, what you want to choose it, you know, uh, anxiety. I'm sure none of us are anxious about Tuesday. Sounds good. Um, um, you know, worry about money, um, uh, stress, grief, sadness, you know, all the stuff that, that we have. Okay, so I think yeah, I think that's good. And one, when we're working with these um, these demons, so uh, some sometimes a lot of our demons can come in relationships with someone. So what we want to really be clear of is that when we are working with the demon, like the demon isn't my husband, you know. <laughs> Jenny, remind myself, it's the feeling that. Uh, that the relationship with him can elicit in me, you know. So if I was working with that, a demon in my marriage, I would work with, you know, um, what have I been feeling? Alone. You know, that I can feel alone sometimes. Um, so I would work with that feeling. What does that aloneness feel like in my body, you know? So, Okay. All right. Well, we'll have, um, it was this good timing. Let me just take a moment to make sure I've said what wants to be said. Yeah. So I'll, I'll ask the three questions, and I mentioned this when I um, told what happened, shared what happened to me in the middle of the night. What do you want? What do you need? So the need is the thing beneath the want. Does that make sense? So, okay, good. Yeah. 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 Find a solution. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, so like the situation is in, uh, caring for my father who has dementia and he's about to run out of money and trying to figure out like, <laughs> what do we do? Yeah. Um, and, so, and like figuring out how to get my siblings and all of, all of those things. So yes. It's like, what do I want? I like, what do I want? I want the situation to be different. <laughs> like, yes. So how do I, how am I talking? How do I, what feeling am I talking? To? Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. Yeah. Like it's, I guess I don't know if it's name, like, I don't know how to name it. So many. It's like anxiety. Yes. Anger. When, when you were talking just now, is it okay if I reflect yeah, yeah. back? Yeah. You, you were kind of like this, like, I don't, you know, that yeah. feeling. So I would just go with that. It's that somatic thing. Okay. If that feels okay. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to intensify it a little bit. Like, what is that? Because that feeling is what um, the stuck energy, you know, mm -hmm. that energy is um, not flowing in a way for you then to have, you know, clarity. So I think, or so what I would just start with there and then the naming maybe will come later and maybe it doesn't even matter what it's called, you know, you're just with that demon of like, oh God, like that feeling. Mm -hmm. Does that, does that seem okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. Anyone else have a question? So we're going to do this um, uh, in two chairs. So if you, you can do it on the on the ground and right, Karen, we can, so you end up, we're going to put two chairs facing each other and then I'm going to guide you to be switching spots. Okay, so just take a few minutes to, and also we can have more cushions if you want to do it on the ground as well. Jenny, the Dharma Collective is muted now. Would you unmute? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sorry, Diane, we're rearranging the room right oh, now. No problem, no problem, just wanted to be here. So Dharma Collective, would you unmute, please? Hi, hi. I was just saying hello to our Zoom friends. And uh, if you don't have two chairs, what was suggested here is you can just turn your chair, you know, move your chair and move your body in your chair. Okay. I didn't even mention that this is the night before Halloween. It's the perfect time to do this. <laughs> okay, so um, well, hopefully you have a sense of what you, you may want to work with. So the, the process will go on mainly with our eyes closed, and then I'll indicate when you switch places and take the seat of the demon and um, then back to your seat and then of the ally. So I'll guide you through that. So let's uh, fall again into silence, a moment of silence. And landing again or uh, landing on the demon you want to work with.
And just uh, knowing this, this, this demon that you're working with, if you know that it's a demon um, through, you know, through your life that causes you to disassociate or, um, you know, leave your body, then at the certain point in the practice when we're asked to dissolve the body, uh, you don't need to do that. So you'll, you just, um, you won't do that, that section. So landing uh, on what you want to work with and taking a moment to come into presence with yourself, with you, yeah, with you, you, yeah. And we begin um, the process with the nine relaxation breaths. So we'll close your eyes and keep them closed as much as possible until the end of the process. So first breathe into any physical tension you are holding in your body. Then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Now breathe into any emotional tension you are holding. Notice where you're holding the emotional tension in your body, then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Three breaths here. Now breathe into any mental tension or worries you're holding. Notice where you're holding mental tension in your body, then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. And we'll generate together a heartfelt motivation to practice for the benefit of yourself and all beings. Thinking about the demon you have chosen to work with, perhaps remembering a particular time or incident when it came up strongly. Then mentally scan your body and locate where in your body you're holding this demon most strongly. Locating where in your body you're holding the demon most strongly. Notice where the demon's held in your body. Now imagine it has a shape. What shape is it? If it had a color, what color would it be? What's the texture or consistency? And what is its temperature? Now intensify the awareness of the energy in your body. Bring your full attention to it. Bringing your full attention to it. Now allow the shape with its color, consistency and temperature to move out of your body and become personified in front of you as a being with face, eyes, limbs, and so on. Allowing it to become personified in front of you as a being with a face, eyes, and limbs, and so on. If an inanimate being appears, invite it to become a being with arms and legs and eyes and so on.
what is its size? What's its color? What is the surface of its body like? What's its density? If it had a smell, what smell would be associated with the demon? If it made sounds, what sounds would be associated? Seeing that demon in front of you, does it have a gender? What's the look in its eyes? What's its emotional state? What's its emotional state? And what what is its character or personality like? And now notice something about it that you didn't see before. Now ask the demon the following questions, repeating them silently one by one. What do you want? What do you really need? What do you really need? How will you feel when you get what you really need? How will you feel when you get what you really need? Now immediately switch places keeping your eyes closed as much as possible, and face your current seat. Good. Take a moment to settle into the demon's body. And feel free to adopt the posture or make a gesture the demon might make if if it's helpful for you. Otherwise, just sit and face your normal self. How does it feel to be in the demon's body? How does your normal self look from the demon's point of view? Now answer these questions silently, imagining you're speaking as the demon. What I want is What I want is. What I really need is. What I really need is.
when I get what I really need, I will feel. Answering that final question as the demon. When I get what I really need, I will feel. And take note of this final answer. Now return to your original seat. And taking a moment to settle back into your body. Taking a moment to settle back into your body. See the demon in front of you. Now, remembering what the demon said it, it would feel if it got what it really needs. So remembering what the demon said it would feel if it got what it really needs. Evoke that feeling and allow this feeling to spread throughout your entire body. Allowing the feeling to spread through your entire body. Now, <clears throat> now, dissolve your body into a nectar that has the quality of this feeling. Dissolving your body into a nectar that has the quality of this feeling. And notice the color of the nectar. Then feed the demon this nectar. Feed the demon this nectar and notice how the demon takes it in. An infinite supply of nectar flows to the demon and nurtures it to complete satisfaction. And notice if the demon changes as it takes in the nectar. Noticing if the demon changes as it takes in the nectar. Feed the demon until it is completely satisfied. Remember there is an infinite supply of nectar.
If the demon is still feeding, imagine what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. Imagining what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. Once the demon is completely satisfied, notice if a being remains. Notice if a being remains. If there is a being that remains, ask it if it is your ally. If it says yes, then you'll work with that. If it says no, or you're unsure, or if the, de- or if the demon dissolved during the feeding and nothing was there, then invite an ally to appear. Invite an ally to appear. See the ally in front of you. If an inanimate being appeared in front of you, imagine what it would look like if it were personified. What size is it? What is its color? What is the surface of its body like? What is its density? If it had a smell, what smell would be associated with the ally? If it made sounds, what kind of sounds would it make? Does it have a gender? What is the look in its eyes? What is the look in its eyes? What is its emotional state? What is its character or personality like? And then notice something about the ally, this being that you didn't see before. Noticing something you didn't see before. Now ask the ally these questions. Repeat the questions silently one by one after me. 
How will you help me? How will you help me? How will you protect me? How will you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? How can I access you? How can I access you? Now, when you're ready, you can switch places. Again, you're taking us the seat of the ally. Yeah. It's good. Take a moment to settle into the ally's body. Taking a moment to settle into the ally's body. How does your normal self look from the ally's point of view? How does your normal self look from the ally's point of view? Now answer the question silently, speaking as the ally. Answering the question silently, speaking as the ally, I will help you by. I will help you by. I will protect you by, I will protect you by. I pledge I will. I pledge I will. And you can access me by. You can access me by. Now return to your original seat. Take a moment to settle back into your own body taking a moment to settle back into your own body and see the ally in front of you. See the ally in front of you. If a satisfied demon 
happen to remain at the end of the feeding, you may invite it back now. And for those who had the demon, perhaps it remained, imagine it dissolves into light and let the light integrate into your body. And now for everyone, look into the ally's eyes. Look into the ally's eyes. And feel its energy pouring into your body. As you feel the energy of the ally coming into your body, it spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet, to your fingertips and throughout your whole body. Notice how this feels. Now, imagine that the ally dissolves into light. Notice the color of this light. Feel this light dissolving into you. Feeling this light dissolving into you. Integrate this luminosity into every cell of your body. as though all your cells were being bathed in light. Take note of the feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. And now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve. Rest in the state that is present after the dissolution. Just rest. Now, uh, gradually come back to your body, recalling the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. Gradually coming back to our bodies, recalling the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. And now, as you slowly open your eyes, maintain the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. So as you open your eyes, maintaining that feeling of the energy of the ally in your body, as we come back to the room.
Good, and let, let yourself slowly come back, stretch whatever your body needs. And I thought before we come back as a group, it would be nice to go back into the little triads that we made at the beginning and to share a little bit about your process. We can do this for five minutes or so. So uh, as, as we share, you know, each of us can perhaps choose to share one or two points, you know, from our experience. Um, if you want to share, well, whichever part struck you the most in a way. That, and then we'll come back as a group. Yeah. 
Do a couple more minutes. Let's do you know one one more minute, or if we're done, we can come back. Has everyone had a chance to share? Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we did it. You did it. So we have, we have 15 minutes left to be together. And I would love to, I would love to hear if, if you all would like to share any part of the, any part of the process, the, um, if there's a part that was surprising or more challenging or if you are surprised by what the demon wanted or what the ally said I'm always moved by that moment where I see myself um, that always does something to me yeah so I'm, I'm curious what was in the room for you all tonight and it's different every time you know 
it can be. And also, we can do it and we can be like, oh, shit, I'm in the same stuff again and again, you know. The psyche can say stuck for a while and then suddenly it's not. So um, there's so many different ways to work with the process. So, yeah, so. I'll start. Cage. Um, I, I was glad you said that. That was something I shared in my group is that still I'm, I've done this a number of times now, and I'm still really surprised at the difference in how I look compared how the demon sees myself and then how the ally <laughs> sees myself is like it's totally and it's always a little bit stunning um, where I'm just like, oh, well, what was it? What do you mind? What was it today? How did the demon see you? And then, well, the demon just sees me as just like shrunken uh, and, yeah, you know, small and withered. You yeah. know, no energy, just yeah. kind of gross. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm tired of you. And then yeah. when the ally looks at me, I'm like this shining light. <sighs> and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> it's always just so startling, a difference. And I know to expect it, but it happened, it surprised me again today, where I was just like, oh, it's so sweet, though. This, it still continuously happens. Yeah. And we did have one thing that came up, too. Uh, and I think I've asked this before, is that sort of like on the spot feeding your demons, like you were mentioning in, in the middle of the night, like, oh, <laughs> do you yeah. like get out of bed and do the whole thing? Or do you just kind of go through it? Well, that's a thing, you know, as I'm, in the yeah, I go through periods. I think now I'm 46. So like my, my hormones are starting to the change. So I'm not sleeping as well, you know. Also, when I was pregnant and my babies were little, I would always practice in the middle of the night because I wasn't sleeping. So I have this thing imprint of doing it then yeah. because then I got it done. And in those early years, I had to do a lot of practice. It was part of my commitment. Um, but yes, and there are nights when I'm awake and I hear my, so, my husband sleeping so peacefully next to me and then that anno really annoys me. And, <laughs> and then I just say, Jenny, come on, you can do it, get up, you can do it. So that's what I did. And I guide, I mean, no, I, I'm got it's the dark. And who wants to be up at two in the morning? So I'm guiding myself through it in my memory. From my memory, yeah. But it's good because for me, then I worked with some of that energy and actually, it wasn't actually even a perfect session at all. And it wasn't even as crisp and clear as some of, as my psyche sometimes gives me those images. But you know, it, it did something and I went back to sleep and then my dreams were interesting, you know? So, is that, was that your? Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh -huh. all, yeah. Should I talk more about being annoyed at my husband because <laughs> he's sleeping? <laughs> we enjoy that. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, no, that's helpful, thank you. Hi, I'm Lucas. Um, that was great. Um, it was very different from the, I've only done it one other time. Yeah. And I felt like the first time I did it, which was maybe six months, a year ago, something like that. The demon felt a lot more critical, like coming from a more kind of critical place. And it felt, when I did it this time, it felt more neutral, mm -hmm. but um, like the message was more clear, like mm -hmm. what it what it wanted was to be understood, I think, but not from like a you need you need to do this, but like coming from a place of neutrality, like it's under, I yeah. don't know, like maybe I've already sort of come to terms with what I need to do. Um, yeah. And sort of like resolving this, I guess, like in my material yes. <laughs> reality. Um, yeah, this is around like, uh, I've, I've had a lot of like fear around like finances and yeah. taking care of myself and stuff like that, right? So, um, and uh yeah and then and then the ally was um yeah just sort of like this feeling of like what my intuition was that it it was um like a feeling of safety right mm -hmm. um and uh my 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 group members you know it came from you know they both noticed that my i had described like sort of like sea creatures as both like the mm -hmm. demon and the mm -hmm. and the ally and uh and so i don't know i mean yeah. I, I i had identified it coming from my stomach, right? And so, I don't know, maybe it's like a lot of liquid in there, so. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's sort of like a, yeah. Yeah, it was cool, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Calm. Thank <laughs> you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, 
I wanted to say something back to you, but. Oh, you know, sometimes, well, you'll see, you know, when you do it again, but um, even that feeling of understanding, you know, that you said the demon was kind of transmitting to you. Is that, am I getting it right? You know, that you, you, even if you never shared what you just shared in the group, you still had that experience of understanding something, you know, like, and I, I, you know, that's enough. That's, that's enough, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also have only done this once before and um, had a somewhat striking experience with this, this demon because I got a good sense of what, what it wanted. But then when it came to what it needed, it was like nothing. Yeah. It was very, very demonic, very like, you know, some demons just want to watch the world burn kind of thing. Yeah. Which felt appropriate, but it still had a, but I still was able to get the sense of what would be the feeling if it did get what it needs, which of the not needing, needing. Mm -hmm. um, it was just absolute boredom. Mm -hmm which was really interesting because then just feeding it boredom juice directly mm, mm -hmm. was very effective. Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of a weird contradictory practice yeah. for me, but it's quite very, very good. Yeah. It made me reflect on, like I could, I could feel how the part of me that's like getting meta on the exercise was like, well, the, what you feed it should be really nice and warm so it gets all the things that it wants but authentically it felt like feeding it this kind of gray boredom juice right was correct even though it wasn't this kind of positive like warm fuzzy thing yeah um and that just led me to think about the nature of boredom and how it can be exactly what you need like and if mm -hmm. running away from it and my relationship with it right um, yeah because sometimes um, we can be wired to wanting maybe like a lot of intensity or, or I'm going to burn this or, ah, you know, and then sometimes you named it boredom, but you know, the feeling of, um, well, I mean, these are my words, not yours, but let's like, let's just chill or I don't, I mean, that's my language, but something like that is the feeling that you're giving this thing. And, um, I would be, if it's, you know, and, and we don't know, that's what's amazing about, I'm sure that energy pattern will show up again in your body. And then you see, you know, like, oh, maybe it'll start showing you another facet of its vulnerability. Because, I mean, we know that um, that want, like, you know, that's often that's covering the much more vulnerable need, you know, underneath. So I think you were getting to it, you're... Um, so thank you for sharing that. Yeah. That really cool. Yeah. Cool. And then you, you had a. I just had a question. Actually, has does has this practice ever been done with the body, where you actually embody the energy? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's um. You do you mean um. Um. Like. In which step? In the... So, like, to become the image that you're actually. Yeah. Yes. Seeing. Yes. Yes. You can do that. Yes. Can do that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. I find I do that too. You can stand up, or sometimes the ally, you know, has the feeling of, you know, I'm not sure, but you, know, you, yeah. you do it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Great. I also like to embody the obstructed one when I feel it first. I bring that to consciousness. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, is this something that is meant to work? Like, is this something that uh, you recommend people think about and remember in a sort of conscious way? Like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to remember that I, what was it called? The helper? Ally, the ally. My, the uh -huh. ally told me this, that, yes. you know, I'm going to do that today or whatever it is uh -huh. versus like letting it just sort of work on its own. Oh yeah. That's a good question. I think both, I think I've had allies that have been very precise. Like how will you, how, um, how can I access you? 
you know, and they say things like, <laughs> um, you know, Jenny, turn your face to the sun. And it sounds corny, but like, you know, you do it and then you feel like the sunlight, you know, on your face. And then that reminds me of the feeling that the ally was giving me. Um, and there's longer processes you can do with the ally, you know. Um, but also the other question, like, I think this is what I've been feeling a lot in my own work is it's, it's enough to do the process. Like the process itself is transforming because you've gotten literally the stuck energy, worked with it and shifted it. Now, after like how Cage was saying, Karen, how you were saying that you can really feel how the ally looks at you with love. And, you know, from a Buddhist perspective, you could say seeing your true self, your essence. And um, so if we don't have that mirror a lot, or if we don't, we can forget that. But now you know, oh, this is how it feels to be seen in the ally's eyes, which by the way, are my own, you know, my own energy is looking back at me. So you're, you're, you're turning, uh, awakening that compassionate lens, you know, in you, you know, while at the same time integrating, like we know from parts work, and this is from Gestalt, in, integrating these shadow um, parts or this blocked energy that isn't maybe yet flowing or fully integrated. And so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a question maybe it's a little bit related to personal practice because i was doing trip yesterday yes working with fear and also did a practice at 3 30 a.m yeah so what i found now was, everyone's going to be up today 3 30 <laughs> i'm sorry it's going to happen no <laughs> what I found is after the practice i get too energetic yes how do you deal with it or like if i want to return to sleep i find it very yes hard. Yes. Well, the Chud, she's doing the formal Chud practice from the Tibetan tradition that, um, that this is the root, the feeding your demons comes from the Chud practice, which is a formal practice that they would do in Tibet, where they do now, where you um, offer, make body offerings to demons, you know, in your mind. And also in real life, you make offerings. You know, I don't know, Gladys. I I don't I practice the chit, but I've never done it at three in the morning because the drum and the bell would um, wake yeah, everyone I, up. I was mainly working with visualization. You're visualizing, yeah. No instrument. No instrument, yeah. Yeah. But even that, I kind of it kind of takes me a long time going back to a restful state. Yes. Yes. It makes sense. You're uh, you're awakening all the all your channels. You're mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm about, I'm gonna think about that for you. Yeah, it's a really good question. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, well, <clears throat> thank you all for coming and um, we'll dedicate the merit together before we close, but um, I wanna thank you for, for coming and for doing the work and um, practicing this, this, this part of the lineage and the tradition. And we didn't talk about it, but that resting state at the end, you know, I don't know if you felt that kind of dissolution, kind of a landing. Uh, that, that's a beautiful moment too to have shared. Okay, well, let's dedicate the merit. Um, as we know, the three parts to all practices, the beginning, middle, end, the raising the bodhicitta, the practice itself, and now the closing, the dedication of merit which is the sending out of the blessings or the wisdom of our time together. 
So we know that the work, that the practice is much more powerful when we do it together. So I thank you for allowing me in to your sangha tonight and for the generosity of spirit and your willingness to move through the practice and be vulnerable and feed your demons and be transformed by your allies. And in this time, specifically in the world, we offer from the depths of our hearts uh, the wisdom, the sweetness, the love that we generated together. And we offer it up to all beings everywhere. As it said, near and far, without one exception. And really seeing in your mind the way that our energy stream can touch all beings in the interconnected web. May it be so. Thank you. Thank you all. If you have questions, of course, you know. And I'll, I'm gonna, I'm coming in again on December 4th to do this again. So if you want to come back, I'll be here. Okay, lots of love.